today I'm going to take you through a guided tour of a PRP procedure. And my name is Dr. Nathan Way. I'm a board certified rheumatologist and this is one of my specialties. And in fact, this is one of my primary specialties. Before I talk about the procedure itself, I think it's important to understand the background behind the procedure. As with any really important procedure that's done on a patient, it's necessary to standardize the process. So experience obviously is key. Consistency, making sure that things are done the same way every time, having everything planned out for each patient is critical. Good clinical practices or what are called GCPs are important as are standard operating procedures, SOPs. If the clinic or practice you go to does not practice GCPs and SOPs, they are not up to snuff. These are considered the gold standard for any type of, of, in, of procedure, whether it's investigational or uh, a regular type of procedure. GCPs, SOPs. Now, what is PRP? Well, PRP is a normal blood clot with a much higher concentration of platelets, roughly four to seven times baseline. So if we look at peripheral blood, platelets are cells that comprise about 6% of normal blood. So what we do is we draw blood from the patient and we process it and concentrate the platelets so that we get a large amount of platelets with only a small number of red blood cells and a small number of white blood cells. And this slide shows that all those little purple dots that you see, those are platelets. The yellow uh, dots are red blood cells and the big dark blue uh, spots are white blood cells. So why are platelets so important? Well, platelets are packed with alpha granules that contain growth and healing factors. And in fact, when it comes to creating normal healing and, and repair, platelet cells are the king. So what is PRP used for? In the shoulder, we use it for rotator cuff tears, not complete tears, but partial tears, um, and, and the importance there is that oftentimes in the past, orthopedic surgeons have said, well, you know, with a partial tear, we can inject some cortisone and then maybe do surgery. Well, if you inject cortisone, cortisone actually impedes the healing process, and you certainly don't want surgery if you can avoid it. Rotator cuff tendonitis. Uh, responds beautifully to PRP, as does biceps tendonitis, and even shoulder arthritis. So the shoulder is one of the joints that, uh, that PRP is used for most often, I would say. Elbow. In the elbow, there are a number of things that can, that can go wrong. Uh, tennis elbow, which is a very common uh, malady that we see, golfer's elbow, and ligament industry injuries all respond well to PRP. In the knee, patellar tendonitis, quadriceps tendonitis, bursitis in the knee, arthritis in the joint, and meniscus abnormalities. One thing that we have been able to, de to determine and to prove is that for um, meniscal tears, rather than have a patient undergo surgery, uh, with arthroscopy and all that other stuff. If you use ultrasound guided PRP injections, that can actually heal 
meniscal tears. In the ankle and foot, Achilles tendonitis. Uh, in fact, I had a bad case of Achilles tendonitis and underwent a PRP procedure and uh, did very well. Plantar fasciitis, shin splints, and other forms of tendonitis and bursitis. In the hip, uh, various types of tendonitis, uh, particularly uh, tendonitis in involving the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus tendons. And that may not m mean a whole lot to you, but that is one of the most common causes of pain felt on the lateral or outside part of the hip. Various types of bursitis, arthritis, as well as sacroiliac joint dysfunction also respond to PRP. And when we do a PRP procedure, the very first step is to draw blood from the patient. We then uh, concentrate uh, and separate the blood so that we get a large number of platelets. Uh, we have used various types of, uh, of uh, machinery. Uh, currently, we're using the arteriocyte system, which we think does a pretty good job. We then evaluate the patient. Uh, for instance, this patient has rotator cuff uh, tendonitis and had a partial rotator cuff tear. And what's important is to remember that injecting PRP is not just injecting PRP. You need to use a form of guidance, and the guidance of choice at this point in time is diagnostic ultrasound. And diagnostic ultrasound allows us to see what's happening inside the joint and inside the tendon, the bursae, and other anatomic structures. So we use ultrasound, and by evaluating the joint or area to be treated in both one axis as well as the perpendicular axis to the original axis, in other words, two dimensions, we get a a very, very good picture of what needs to be done. The area of concern is then prepared sterilely, anesthetized, and during the process of anesthesia, we also use the needle to irritate the tendon or ligament, poking holes in it. Um, in other words, uh, Fenestrating it, which is a term meaning to um, poke small holes in it. Um, and the reason is, is by inducing an area of injury, that's what causes the platelets to release the, their alpha granules and growth and healing factors. And once that's done, we take our PRP concentrate, and you can see that's our PRP inside the syringe, and we put it into the area that we have um, that we have irritated. Um, some people have termed it peppering the area with with holes, and and pre that's a pretty uh, uh, accurate description. And that's the end of the tour. For more information, you may contact us at the Arthritis Treatment Center, 71 Thomas Johnson Drive, Frederick, Maryland, 21702, by phone, 301-694-5800, and you can find us on the internet at www.arthritistreatmentcenter.com. Thanks for watching.